the year 545 AD, as the city of Constantinople sparkled with its newest gem, the Cathedral of the Hagia Sophia, Roman Emperor Justinian I set his seal of approval on another edifice. Though smaller in size and reputation, it entrusted itself to the patronage of one who had already enjoyed a devotion in the early centuries of the church. It was known and loved as St. Anne's Church. Today, on July 26, the church remembers and celebrates the memorial of Saints Joachim and Anne, the parents of the Mother of God. While Joachim and Anne are not mentioned in the Bible, these two saints have had a place in Christian tradition as early as the second century, starting with the document known as the Proto-Evangelium of James. Through the early synods and councils, the fathers did not include this text in the canon of scripture. Its late authorship between 145 and 170 AD discredited a close connection with the apostles and therefore Christ. It also contained theological ideas that didn't align with other unanimously accepted Christian writings, such as Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Overall, the Proto-Evangelium of James holds some value, especially because it supports the goodness of Mary, but the Church, guided by the Holy Spirit since Pentecost, has known that it is not a divinely inspired book. In that text, we hear the story of a wealthy and pious couple of the tribe of David who lived in Nazareth. One day, Joachim was denied admission to the temple because his family was childless. The grief of this burden drove him to the mountains, where he fasted and prayed for 40 days. During that time, his wife Anne also prayed. These petitions were eventually answered. Within a year, Joachim and Anne were blessed with a daughter, and they named her Mary. In keeping with an earlier promise, Anne dedicated her child to the Lord, and on her third birthday, Mary was offered to God in the temple of Jerusalem. Reflecting on the little that we know of these saints, we see examples of humble obedience and the potency of prayer. Mary certainly had parents, and these would have raised her in the Jewish faith. They would have taught her the Torah, they would have read the Psalms with her, and lived out the commandments given by Moses. Joachim and Am did not do anything sensational or newsworthy in their lives, but they lived ordinary lives with extraordinary love. They worked, they prayed, they embraced their call to marriage by loving the gift that was their daughter Mary and entrusting her to God. They tended to what God was calling them to do in the present moment, a disposition that bears fruit according to God's plan and not our own. For Ann and Joachim, that involved teaching Mary how to read, how to pray, and how to love within a family. She would later bring these into her own family, the Holy Family. As she taught her son, the Word made flesh how to write, how to read, how to pray, and how to relate to others. For us, the reality is that we have no idea what kind of effect we have on other people, especially when we account for prayer and time. Anne and Joachim had no idea that their daughter would become the new Eve, the new Ark, and the mother of God. But following their example, if we align ourselves to what the author of life made us for, we will find ourselves amid the Lord's work, the same Lord that included Mary and her parents in His divine wisdom some 2,000 years ago. Saints Joachim and Anne, pray for us.